Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time. This is Sat Chat. This is not a tutorial. This is not my beautiful house. <laughs> this is not my beautiful life. This is not a tutorial. This is just the uh, the weekly catch up. I should probably start this over again, but I'm not going to. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you're not going to learn anything. But um, but it's been a busy week. It's been a good week. A uh, good week for me anyway. It was very rainy, which um, kept me buckled down inside and working. And I finally finished the 30 Days to Better Painting class. Um, it would have long, actually, <laughs> future Lindsay has finished 30 Days to Better Painting. Current Lindsay actually has a little more tweaking and polishing to do. But by the time Sat Chat comes out, it will be done because I'm filming this on Friday morning. It's 1027. I'm going to go have lunch with my friend Kathy in a little while to my favorite restaurant, Green Tea. I'm so excited. Uh, you remember Kathy. She used to do Ask a Crafter with me. And actually, you can find all the past Ask a Crafter episodes. I've put them in a podcast playlist here on YouTube if you want to set it going and listen to you the crafty goodness while you go about your day. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have lunch. I'm so excited about that. I'm so excited to finally finish the 30 Days to Better, better Painting class. You can kind of see I'm, I've got the board of some of the paintings back there. I've got a, um, yeah, I'm, I'm set up here just to film a, the promo for it and whatnot, but yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, so basically, I'll just tell you a little bit about the class. It is 30 paintings in 30 minutes or less. I think actually one painting might be like 31 minutes, but I'm like, eh, semantics. Um, but you know, you block out about the amount of time it'll take you to watch a show and you can do a painting. And the reason I created, though, well, actually, this, let's rewind a little bit. Um, about a year ago, uh, my friend Sarah Renee Clark, who has a channel about uh, adult coloring books, she came out with this product called the Color Catalog and the Color Cube. And this is what they are actually. I thought it was such a cool idea because inside here, inside each of these is like 250 different cards. And I was having a, a real struggle. I was struggling with artist block, which I, I honestly, usually around January, I get hit with like a, a powerful case of, I don't wanna. And, but I do wanna, I do wanna create, I do wanna paint, but for whatever reason, I just can't make it happen. I'm not feeling inspired. And so, Sarah sent me these cubes and then I realized that I could just pull a card, either be inspired by the color palette on it or be inspired by the reference image and use that to create an artwork. And it doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be precious, but it would get me creating. And I would just take that, tell myself I'm gonna do this for half an hour and I'm gonna make something. And just taking out that decision because I would get decision fatigue because there'd be so many options and so many things I could use in this and that. Just take, draw a card, draw the thing. And I, I emailed Sarah and I'm like, Sarah, I think this is really powerful. Could I use this in an upcoming class? I have this idea to do this painting a day class. And she's like, I think that's a great idea. Go right ahead. And um, so I did. And you don't need to have the color cube to do the class. All the, um, you have all the reference images and stuff you need in the class. But I do think it's a really powerful tool. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. She has a digital version, which is cheaper. Um, if you, And if you prefer like to use like a tablet or whatnot, it's very well organized either way. Um, but I'm like, that's really powerful. And that was pulling me out of the artist block when I was just feeling so gloomy and I was feeling like I couldn't create anything. And I'm like, I could help other people get painting every day and improve their skills. And so what I did was I created this class. I've been working on it since about February called 30 Days to Better Painting. And there's 30 lessons. There's 10 lessons in oils, 10 lessons in acrylics, and 10 lessons in gouache. But you could do all the lessons in gouache. You could do all 30 lessons in acrylics. You could do all 30 lessons in oils. It's totally up to you. The 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 uh, the lessons are adaptable. They can go to whatever medium. So like if you are, say you're a, a, a new mom and you are trying to paint when the babies are napping. I say babies because I had twins. I had twins when my son wasn't even two years old yet. So I know how precious those like overlapping nap times are. You could just open up a, a, a set of jelly gouache and a sketchbook and just work for 30 minutes and then be done and then put it away in your, your set. Close the sketchbook up, put the lid on your gouache, you're done. I want it to be something simple enough that somebody with brand new baby twins could do it, but also just something that like if you are, a, maybe you're a professional artist and you just need something to get you started at the beginning of the day because, you know, it just, you, you hem and haw, you hem and haw, you hem and haw, I hem and haw, I fart around and I hem and haw, and this is to all the other farter arounders, all the other farters out there. That's not so awful. All the other procrastinators out there that just kind of like, well, put her around and not actually do anything. Just 
turn on your computer, grab your supplies, get going. Uh, maybe you're ex you're curious about acrylics. Maybe you're curious about oils. You'd like some easy projects to get you started in there. And I don't say easy meaning easy, but what I've found that whenever I've done a monthly challenge, I love to do monthly challenges. I love to do World Watercolor Month. I'm actually an ambassador for World Watercolor Month this year. Um, and uh, I love doing Inktober. I find that during those month-long challenges, I really level up over the course of a month doing that daily practice. I also find that the first 20 minutes of a, of a piece of artwork that I'm doing for a daily challenge, that's where all the meat is. That's where all the breakthroughs happen. That's where all the real work is done. And then like after that 20 minute mark, it's just making it pretty. And so I'm like, if I could con condense these lessons into 30 minutes, so you're getting the real work done. It's like you are getting the most powerful part of your art workout done right off the bat. That's where the growth is going to happen. So when you're limited on time, you really have to make sure you're putting the work in where the growth is going to happen. And so that's what I have striving to do. That's what I'm striving to do with this class. I think I have succeeded. And um, if you want to give it a chance, I am putting it at 50% off for the launch month for the for the month of June. You can buy it for 50% off. That way, that's the cheapest it's ever going to be. It's the lowest price. I am a big believer in giving the people that have helped make me where I am today, helped put me there, the best deal. So... Yeah, I just, I don't like that whole th thing of like putting something really expensive and then marking it down if it doesn't sell. No, I want my favorite people to get the best price. So there it is. It's a lot of content. The regular price on it is going to be $99. So you'll get it for half off if you buy it this month. And, um, and yeah, I think you'll, I think you'll get at least a hundred dollars worth of, worth of, um, value from it. Hopefully more, hopefully like a million dollars, a million dollars worth of content. <laughs> Maybe not that much, but I definitely think it's going to help. It's all organized. It's all concise. You get lifetime access. So if like, it might be something you do every year. Maybe you have an art block every January like I do. And maybe that will be your January kickstart. That'll be like, you know, join the gym. <laughs> you know, you do the 30 days and then you're good to go. But what really what I, what I want this to be is I want it to um, encourage you to get in that daily practice. And um, like, it's not a big deal if you skip a day. You got to do what works for your life. And you know, our days are not perfect. We don't have perfect days where we drink a green smoothie and we, you know, hit the gym and we do our painting. You know, hey, life is, is messy. Life is not perfect. But if you can do, if you can do it most days, and then you'll start looking at the world differently. And you'll start, you'll be flipping through your magazine, or you'll be flipping through the newspaper, and something will catch your eye. Or you'll be, like, I was walking the dog yesterday morning, and it, hit, it was raining, and there was this leaf on the ground, and it had the perfect water drops on it, because it had just stopped raining for a minute. I grabbed my phone, I took a picture of that. That's what you'll start doing. You'll start noticing these things, the things that turn you on artistically. You're going to, like, catch a glimmer of color. You're going to see a little thistle just kind of growing out between a crack in the in the sidewalk and you're going to take a picture of that you are going to see a pasture of cows you'll take a picture so you'll see what excites you and you'll start collecting those images phone's great it's great to take pictures on your phone because you usually have your phone with you so when you're looking for something to paint you just grab your phone flip through your gallery find something get to work i want to make you more decisive i want to remove the decision fatigue and Instead of thinking about what you're going to paint for 30 minutes, actually just get that painting done. It doesn't have to hang in a museum. It can be in your sketchbook. It doesn't have to be precious. Nobody else has to see it if you don't want to. Although if you do want to post the paintings that you do in the lessons, you totally can. And I'll give you feedback. So you have that also as part of your as part of your enrollment in the 30 Days to Better Painting. Um, but yeah, it's, like it's training you to have the artist's eye. Because as artists, we show people to see beauty in the ordinary. We show people the beauty in that leaf that's on the ground covered in dewdrops or that thistle growing through the crack in the sidewalk or the pasture of cows. We show people the beauty in a pair of con converse, you know, in the middle of the floor that, you know, it might be a precious memory of your kids being home. Those things are the daily ordinary beauty that we can show others as artists. So I train you to see it, train you to take note of it, remember it, take a picture, maybe even clipping photos from magazines if something strikes your fancy. It might even be like an advertisement from like, sometimes I'll get an advertisement from like Sam's Club and it will be, there'll be some beautiful food like staged for 
I don't know, like a Super Bowl party or Valentine's Day or summer cookout and there'll just be something about the glossiness of the strawberries or the fluffiness of the whipped cream or whatever and I'll, and I'll tear that out and I'll throw it in um, in a folder by my fun art desk upstairs so when I want to paint but I'm struck, I don't know what to do, I just want to do something, I can grab that. I've had a packet of duck sauce, I'm not kidding you, I've had a packet of duck sauce sitting on my desk upstairs because I think it's so pretty how the bubbles are in there with the, the translucent um, in the translucent packet and the writing on it. I don't know, it was something about that it just struck my fancy. So I grabbed it and I threw it on my desk. So next time I'm sitting up there and I don't know what to paint, I will draw that duck sauce and I'll do a little watercolor of it. So, uh, so I mean, I know it's very ethereal. It's hard to pin down in words. What is this class? It is, I want just to be distilled inspiration to get you creating every day because it's the things you do every day that makes a difference in your life. It's not that working out once a week that's going to improve your health exponentially. It's that everyday walk. It's that um, you know, picking up a phone and calling a friend. It's doing that on a, on a, on a everyday basis. Those things that you do all the time are the things that create the best life and, um, and improve your life and improve your skills. So I don't know, that probably sounds kind of a woo woo, but, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. You can check out the class. I'll have it linked in the uh, video description with all the discount link in the video description and the coupon code. So uh, you can make sure that you enter that when you are buying or you click the discount link, it'll already be there. But um, I don't know what the code is yet. I haven't plugged that into my computer yet. <laughs> but uh, but we'll get there. Well, it, life's a process, right? We'll get there. So, uh, so yeah, uh, it's been a crazy week. <laughs> like I mentioned, I decided to try volleyball on Sunday. So I didn't really know what to expect, but the game looked fun. I haven't played it since like gym class, probably in junior high. Cause like when you're in uh, in Maine in high school back in the nineties, you only had to take two years of gym and I didn't really care for gym very much. I didn't want to get sweaty at school. Uh, so I took my, actually, you know what? I don't think we had to take gym in high school. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm trying to think. Yeah, we had to take gym. I think we had to take two years or maybe a year of gym and a year of health. I can't remember, but I just did the bare minimum. Same with math. I did the bare minimum. And uh, now I think you have to take it for four years. But anyway, uh, so the last time I played volleyball, I was either in high school or I was in junior high and I was not terribly gifted in any sport. So it was kind of one of those situations where it's kind of fun, but I'm also kind of like terrified when the ball comes to me that I'm gonna let the whole team down. Always the last person picked for the team, let me just tell you. So I was a little nervous because I'm like, is this gonna be one of these situations where everyone's like, you know, picking teammates? I might get picked early on before they know that I have no skills, but then after that, it's gonna be like, no, she's last and we're gonna put her wherever the ball doesn't go. <laughs> She'll be holding the bench down basically. Uh, so I went. And um, I was one of the first person people there, so I helped them put the nets up. And, uh, and if you're not skilled, just try to be helpful. That's my, my philosophy in life. And I'm like, okay, this is good. There's not that many people. Okay, this is great. And then people flooded and like, where are these people coming from? I don't know any of these people. This is like a, like a, my small town rec department. I'm like, oh, and there were like 23 people there. And I'm like, oh my word. And there's so many like guys, usually it's like pickleball is mostly women and mostly older women. And so I'm like, oh man, there's all these big guys. I'm going to get trampled. <laughs> They're not going to want to let me play. Um, so then the, the person leading it, she's like, okay, we're going to count out one, two, three, four. And so that's how they divided up the team. So there was, it was, perfect. One team had five people, but all the other teams had six. And so everyone could play the whole time. First half hour, I was absolutely terrified. And I'm like, I am never coming back. This is scary. I'm in way over my head. I'm never doing this again. And, um, but I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to gonna power through, you know, what sort of role model would I be to my daughters if I'd like quit, like during the middle of the game? No, I'm going to stick it out. So the first two games, I was in a team of six. Luckily, one of the other players took me under his wing and was kind of show, telling me, okay, so if you are like, cause I didn't know anything about this. I watched some videos on YouTube, but it's one of those things. It's like, until you do it, you really don't have a clue. Same thing with painting. The best way to learn how to paint is to paint get the paint out and paint. That's 30 days to better painting. You're getting out, you're getting that paint out and you are going to town right away. So the best way to learn to paint is to paint. The best way to learn how to play volleyball is to jump in and play volleyball. So, um, so I'm like, I didn't know how to serve. I didn't know how to like hit it. I didn't know anything. I was a blank slate. And so he's like, okay, 
if you're if you're standing here, so he's telling me what the different positions are. So I, I'm like, I'll be in the back in the middle because I'm like that won't see much action. He's okay. So your job, hit it to the guy in the middle in the front row. Okay. So look, I'm always if I'm in the back row, I'm hitting it to the guy in the middle in the front row, so he can hit it to one of the guys to his left or right that's gonna hit it over. So I'm like, when I was in the front row, okay, you're gonna you're gonna receive it from the guy in the middle, you're gonna hit it over. So your job is just to get it over the net. Get okay. My job here is over the net. Okay. My job here is hit it to one of these two guys. So I mean, like I was just like whatever position I was in, I was like, okay, where do I send the ball? And that worked out pretty well. And uh, I was so sore. I'm still kind of sore, to be honest. My my quads, um, very, very sore. But probably because I was kind of like in this like hunched state, like kind of like, like I was kind of like in this like hunched, like not hunched, but like squatted kind of state ready to pounce and like hit the ball wherever it came because I'm like, I do not want to be like, I'm just trying to be prepared for when it comes to me because I'm like, I know I don't have any skills, I can't aim it, I'm just lucky, I'm just gonna do my best to hit the ball either to the person I'm supposed to hit it to or over the net, one or the other. And uh, I did okay, I did okay, I mean, I'm not gonna win any awards or anything, but I did fine and I can't wait to go back. Um, but yeah, my legs were sore, and I did, but I did go and play pickleball on Wednesday, and I was a little sore, but it was, it was fine, it was fine. I'm good, I'm good. I'm trying to wear high heels today, though. I'm going to go out to lunch, try to be a fancy lady, and wear high heels, so these are those cute ones. Watch this, I'll look like I'm like a, the 50-foot woman. Oh, I'm going to trample your city, but look how cute these heels are, aren't they adorable? Isn't that funny, like, forced perspective, looks like I'm going to like, totally trample your city, like a... Godzilla or something, but um, yeah, totally excited to wear those shoes out. My legs are still sore in them, but I'm like, hey, that's gonna just help me build my muscles, I suppose. Uh, yeah, because I got my I got my uh, my polka dot <laughs> sending my man off to war in the 1940s dress on. So uh, yeah, I'm a stylish lady today. <sighs> Can't wait to go out and have lunch. But anyway, that was my that's how I started the exciting week was was learning how to play volleyball, and I'm gonna go back. I'm very excited. I'm gonna go buy my own ball though, because I need to practice serving. And I also want to just practice kind of hitting it around. I'll probably just hit it off the roof of my house or something and just kind of just see how much I can, you know, hit it and serve it and all of that. Uh, so I got to do that. Um, I borrowed my daughter's knee pads because my daughter Lyle plays volleyball in college. Not like they have like an intramural team. They'll play like some other local schools. I don't think they have a school volleyball team per se. It's just kind of like a fun one. They do scrimmages and whatnot. So um, I'll probably buy my own set of knee pads because I do tend to dive for the ball a lot. Because you know what? If you're not very good, you got to put out the effort. You know, you got to try hard if you're not very skilled <laughs> in life. Um, but who knows? I guess I'll probably be skilled eventually. I learned how to play pickleball. That was fun. I'm enjoying that. I guess I'm just trying to find ways to stay fit and have fun and uh, just enjoy life because we only have one turn and we don't know how long it's going to last. I saw this quote and it was, it said, um, how would you, if you knew you were dying, what would you do? How would you spend your day? What would you try? And then it said, because we're all dying. So we don't know how long we have. So, you know, join that team, paint that painting. Live your life, have fun. Go to lunch with your friend when they ask, you know? Uh, I think we could all use more of that. Pick up the phone, call a friend, phone a friend. Uh, what else do I have to talk about? <laughs> oh my gosh, 17 minutes in. Um, ha, I posted the resin video. It wasn't up last weekend when I was telling you guys about it. I posted the resin palette video. Um, apparently it was quite a comical video. People were like uh, saying how much they laughed during it laughing at my suffering, but hey, whatever. If I can't be a good example, at least I can be a cautionary tale. I can be a good warning. <laughs> One or the other, right? I have notes. Let me see. What did I put on my notes? Have I talked about it all? I don't know. Uh, oh my gosh. So I was talking to my friend Sheila. She runs a toll paint, tollpaintingdesigns.com, I believe is her website. She has beautiful designs, she's up in Canada. And she told me that Deco Art is retiring 37 of their Americana colors. And, um, I was like, wow, that's a lot. But then I guess a lot of people like wrote to Deco Art and said, hey, this is not cool. We have patterns out using these colors. You know, we've written things for magazines. We've designed patterns that we sell. We're you know doing YouTube videos. We are using a lot of these colors and they are reconsidering retiring so many. And I think that's really great. So I really think that as consumers, we have the power to affect the change that we want in the world and in the companies that we shop with. Like if you are tired of companies retiring products all the time, because I understand like companies do need to freshen up their look um, if they want to sell more products, especially in the craft, more in the craft department than in the um, art world. If they want to sell product, they got to give new product. Because once you've bought the paint, you got to use it up in order to buy it again. And a lot of times you're not using it up. You're not using stuff up. That's why 
stamp companies have monthly stamp releases. That's why um, paint companies come out with new palettes all the time and new sets all the time. That's why uh, pattern paper companies come out with new designs and new packs. And, you know, it's that constantly having something new and fresh and exciting. That's why clothing companies change the style of a clothing a little bit and come up with a new line. It's kind of this fast fashion mentality that we have in this kind of late stage capitalism time that we're in. And it's really frustrating with companies like that that sell, they have like a line of hundreds of colors. Um, they've kind of trained their their customers not to mix their own colors, just to buy that convenience colors. So then people will make patterns with those convenience colors to make it easier on the customers that only have you know, short amounts of time to paint. They want a, they want a very um, expected result. They want to buy a kit and transfer it and know they paint this color here. It's going to look, it's going to look right. It's, they, you know, they're doing it as a pastime and a hobby. And that's really frustrating because um, especially as if people have invested in all of this paint, then the 37 of those colors are now going to be discontinued and they're not going to, you know, they bought them so they can use them in different painting projects and painting books that they buy and then they can't because the color's no longer available. That's very frustrating for everybody. And, um, yeah, I'm so glad that, that, that their customers are speaking up and say, listen, this is kind of crazy to, re to, to get rid of 37 colors. You know, people have bought them. They've spent their money on that. A lot of people do not have unlimited money to spend on their hobby. And, uh, and yeah, I think that's good. I think that's good holding companies accountable and, you know, purchasing from companies that don't constantly retire products is always, a, is also a good way to encourage that, um, encourage that longevity in art supplies and craft supplies. So yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was really interesting. I thought I would mention it too, because, um, also if you are, um, if you're someone who uses the Americana line of paint, you might want to see what colors are slated for uh, discontinuation. And if they're colors you really count on, you might want to grab an extra bottle. Not that I want to like, because I think that also kind of like announcing what's going to be retired kind of like is done to spur sales. But also it's like if it's if you're almost out of that color and you know you really rely on it, you might want to think about grabbing another bottle. I don't recommend stockpiling craft grade acrylics because there's so much more water in those bottles of paint that they could, their shelf life is a little bit more reduced compared to like tube acrylics that are more heavy bodied. Um, but just, just, just putting it out there if it's something that you're, that you're concerned about. And oh, I've got something fun coming up this weekend. On Sunday, my sister and I, we will, we've talked about painting at the Botanical Gardens in Booth Bay Harbor for, um, we, we talked, we mentioned it, I think it was like last winter. We both wanted to go do it. I don't know if she's plein air painted before, but I love plein air painting. And, um, and our husbands want to go, they want to go to the Botanical Gardens. So, um, they're doing plein air days, actually, I think starting, like, I think it's like the 10th through the 12th or something. And they basically open it up for artists to come in and paint. And so we're going to go down on Sunday. It's a quite a hike for me. It's about two hours for me. So we're going to meet there and, um, and paint together. That should be fun. I'm not sure what I want to bring yet. So I'm not sure. I'm thinking watercolors would be the easiest, but I think also if I'm going to be there all day, I might want to like stand at an easel and so I'm thinking, well, maybe I want to do pastels or maybe I want to bring my Peshad box that has my acrylics in it. So I'm not sure. I probably will bring watercolors as well because they're kind of my comfort, um, my comfort medium. But uh, and I could definitely carry a much lighter kit with watercolors. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring a block watercolor paper. I don't know. I just need to get this, uh, get this class, get my 30 days to better painting completely polished up and launched. And then tomorrow. I will focus on that because I'm filming this Friday morning. So today, when you're watching this, I'll be figuring out what I'm going to bring to me to the botanical, with me to the botanical, oh my gosh, I've used up all my good talking for the day. Bring with me to the botanical garden. So if you have any suggestions or ideas, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you're up to. I hope that wherever you are, you have, uh, you're having a nice weekend. I hope your air quality is good. The wildfires in Canada have been, um, such a, a horrible thing. We haven't been getting, we haven't been hit by the smoke here in Maine because it's been raining all week and that low pressure system has been keeping this, the, the smoke from coming to us. But I know, um, like New York, Pennsylvania, there's like 16 American states that are affected by really heavy smoke levels and dangerous air quality. So I hope you're staying in and staying safe and taking care of yourself and checking on your neighbors, making sure everybody is, uh, is safe and healthy that you care about that is in your vicinity because we all have to look out for one another. Um, so I hope that, uh, that, that you are safe and healthy where, wherever you are. And, 
I hope that if you are in Canada that the fires are not at your doorstep because man that's scary that's really scary so this rain is definitely well needed so I'm not going to wish away the rain I know that uh, I my lawn is currently a jungle but I don't that's much better than having uh, wildfires so hopefully that will be under control very soon. Like I said, I haven't, um, I don't have regular TV, so I don't see the news very often. I have to kind of look it up on purpose online. Um, but yeah, that's scary. That's a really scary thing. I'm trying to think if there's anything else really exciting this week. Um, kind of drawing a blank. I had a review for the Artify markers that Jerry's Artorama is selling. They have, um, they have refills. They're launching them with refills. They remind me a lot of the Ohuhu markers, so I'm wondering if there may be some sort of correlation there between the Artifies and the Ohuhus. I don't know. Ohuhu is coming out with refill inks later this month, so they should be hitting Amazon by the end of the month, from what I've heard from my... Maybe I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned, because when they come out, I will, I will, uh, I will share them. I will have some to review. Um, I don't have them yet though, but the like these wide markers from Ohuhu, I really love this product. These look like the, the bottles of the Artify refills, so I'm thinking they might be similar and like the lipstick red in both Artify and the Ohuhu wide markers had a similar code, not exactly the same. Like the, da the hyphen was different basically and the color didn't look exactly the same to me either, but man, I'm just wondering if there may be some sort of correlation there. And I'm hoping so because I love to have affordable ink refills for my markers. Their ink refills are way cheaper than Copic. They're 25 um, mLs versus Copic is 10 mLs and they're like 350 for 25 mLs versus 599 for 10 mLs of Copic. And Copic has been having some major quality control issues. I am not recommending anyone purchase new Copic sketch markers because people that have bought the Copic sketch in like the last... Uh, two years have been having them dry out like there's like minuscule cracks in the cap or something something is up with their caps and their people's markers are drying out so people have to replace the nibs the nibs are like three bucks a pop for Copic markers and like refill them before their useful life should be over so I don't know I think Copic probably took some pretty hard hits with all of the pretty decent budget brush markers that have come out over the past few years and I know they have uh, pulled back letting uh, they I think they got rid of the American distributor so you have to order directly from Copic now so they've cut out that middleman and I think they're just trying to stay afloat because the competition is stiff now in the alcohol marker, marker game none of the markers are light fast so it's like if you buy a Hoo or you buy a Copic it doesn't really matter none of those pictures you make if you hang them in light are light fast you know, you're basically making them to reproduce or keep in a sketchbook. So yeah, it's kind of really hard to justify eight bucks a pop for a Copic marker when you can do the same 50 cents a marker and have um, a pretty much identical image on the page. Uh, the Copic nibs are great, but there are other great nibs too with other brands. So I don't know. But that's the end of Sat Chat. We're going to run out of time. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it and check out the video description for a link to my brand new class, 30 Days to Better Painting. Whoo! That's a lot to say. See you later. Happy crafting. Bye.